Hi, students. Nice to uh, see you again. Okay, thanks for joining my class. All right, okay. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, have some uh, feedback whether you're able to hear me. Can you please type in the comment box whether you can uh, hear? Is my audio all right? Are you able to hear me? Okay, before I proceed. Okay, I hope you had your dinner. Uh, so this is my second replacement class since I was not able to have class in the daytime. Uh, can you please type in the chat box? Okay, yes, I'm getting some response. Okay, right. Hello, uh, Yi Ting, Xiao Wen, Xin Yi. Okay, yes, I see. Yes, all right, good. Okay, Yi Ling, Jia Wei, Kai Qing. Okay, now I'm going to share screen. Okay, let's see if you can see this. Okay, are you able to see this as well? Please uh, mention uh, in the chat box. All right, okay. The yes, I assume, is for the uh, sharing screen. Okay, because I did ask about the audio. So, is everything okay? Yeah, all right. I'm looking at yes, a lot of yes. All right, okay. So, all right, I know I'm going a little bit fast. But actually, uh, during our Google Meet next week, I'm going to go through again parts that you didn't understand. Maybe I will have more details. Okay, so today I would like to go straight to chapter two, which is leaf structure and function. All right, okay. So now, this is in your textbook. All right, you will get your textbook soon. That will be on uh, Monday. Okay, but in the meantime, I already give you the soft copy so you can refer to that later. Okay, now, so you can see here, these uh these are the examples of leaves. So leaves, as you know, sometimes you know uh they are not always green. Okay, this you are see some examples of leaves that have turned uh orange or yellow, and this is because they are actually drying. Okay, they have turned because there's during autumn they actually have some physiological changes. Okay, now I'm going to talk about structure of leaf. Okay, structure of the leaf and also the function. So here usually this is also a popular question where you have, um, okay, first of all, okay, first of all, let's look at uh, function. Function, this, this question is actually quite popular because they always ask you, what are the adaptations of the leaf? That means what makes the leaf so good at carrying out its job, okay? As you know, what is actually the, uh, the job of the, the leaf? Okay, I think you learned this already in form, a lower form. So what is the function of, the leaf actually why why do all plants have leaf okay what is the function of leaf they they are actually made to just to do one job okay so can you guess what the job is can you type in the chat box what is the job of actually leaf they are only made uh they're specially designed okay by nature okay or uh, some people believe that uh, believe uh, are made by god so so uh it is only perform one function okay so what is the function can someone just type in the comment box? Yeah, in the chat. Uh, what is the function of leaves actually? Okay, I'm waiting for the response. I think it will take some time for the response to come through. Okay. Any response from you so far? I don't see any response. If I don't see any response, I have to give you the answer, okay? <laughs> now, I think you will see some of the answers already here, okay? From my, what you can see here. Carry out photosynthesis to supply food, yes. To produce food, correct. The law may seem. So carrying out photosynthesis is the job. And the reason to carry out photosynthesis is actually to produce glucose, which will be converted as starch in the form of starch to be stored in the leaf. Okay, now, so you will see that why, why? How come sometimes the, in uh, temperate countries, countries which have four seasons, okay, the color of the leaf changes? This will never happen in countries like Malaysia, where we have tropical weather. So we're a tropical country. Now, this is because, okay, besides chlorophyll, there are also other pigments. So here is in your textbook here. There are other pigments called carotenoid. Now, this is going to give you the orangey color, okay, and anthocyanin. So these are the other pigments besides chlorophyll. So chlorophyll, as you know, is green. It gives you the green color. But besides chlorophyll, which is green, you also have other pigments which give you different color, like carotenoid is uh, orangey, and anthocyanin, if I'm not mistaken, is the bluish or uh, bluish type of uh, coloring. Okay, the chlorophyll pigment causes the leaf to appear green. Okay, so in four season countries, the leaves are green, 
in summer because the light intensity is very high. So it's very conducive for the plants to produce food. Okay, so that it needs a lot of chlorophyll. Okay, so it uses a lot of chlorophyll during that time. So during autumn and winter, because of lack of sunlight and so on, lack of uh, favorable conditions, the plants will stop or reduce their rate of making food. Okay, so the chlorophyll will also reduce and therefore these chlorophylls will break down and without chlorophyll, the other pigments like carotenoid and anthocyanin will be more easily uh, noted. That means you can see it clearly. Therefore, the color becomes not so green, but you will have colors like orange and so on. Okay, so I, I'm not too sure about the color anthocyanin. Maybe I'll check it out and let you know later. Okay, but it's definitely carotenoid. It'll give the orangey color. Okay, so let's look at the function of leaves. Okay, so as you know, all right, the leaf is to make food, all right? So it's actually known as a food factory or we call it kilang makanan, okay? And the structure of a leaf can be divided into two parts. So there are two parts of the leaf. So we look at the external structure and the internal structure, okay? So external means the outside. Okay, let's look at what is outside. So basically you find the leaves, they are always very flat and they're very thin. Okay, so there are two parts of the leaf here. One is called the lamina and one is called the petiole. Okay, what is lamina, what's petiole? Let's look at this picture here. If you take a piece of leaf, okay, you have the tangkai. Tangkai is the, you know, Cantonese we say the thing, okay? The thing is like the the, the, the piece that holds, holds the leaf. So you look here, over here, this is the petiole, okay? So I'll put color here. Okay, this this part is a petiole. This is called the stalk. Uh, we call it a stalk. So the function of the leaf is actually to hold the leaves so the leaves doesn't drop, okay? Or the leaf doesn't like, you know, it's wilted and it, it's like, you hold it straight and you hold it flat so that it can receive sunlight, okay? <coughs> okay, now the other one, the other part would be this whole, uh, this whole structure here, which is, okay, I'm going to put red. And, okay, this one, this whole thing. Now this is called the lamina or another name is called the blade. Okay, na pian yet na the the piece of that thing is called lamina. So as you know, the leaves are always flat. Okay, they're usually flat, and the, there's a reason for that. Okay, we'll look for the reason later on. Okay, and then you have the leaf stalk here, it continues into the leaf, it continues into the lamina. So this is actually you have xylem and phloem inside here. Okay, a lot of xylem and phloem which transports water and food. So and then you have also branching out okay the xylem and phloem branching out to other parts of the lamina and this is called the vein okay vein in cantonese you always say kan actually is you know kan is a very a general word actually so we don't use vein okay so the vein is not like the vein in humans where you have the oxygenated blood so we just use the same name on it vein is just the part that it carries or transports for the plant is actually consists of xylem and phloem tissues here. Xylem and phloem. Okay, that you collectively you call the vein. Uh, that's what you see there. Okay, margin is the 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 tepi, the, the side. Okay, this is called a margin. Okay, and the midrib is the middle one. The middle vein is called the midrib. Okay, and so these are the parts. And now what the tip, the tip is the sharp point, the pointed end, is also another name is called apex. Okay, apex or the tip of the leaf. Okay, so you will see that uh, majority of the leaves will be flat, okay, and also is like uh, as thin as possible. So the reason is because uh, you will you will be able to trap more sunlight, okay, able to be exposed to more sunlight. Okay, so let's look at the, so we have look at two parts already, yeah? so the lamina and the petiole forms the external structure. Okay, so these two are the external structures which you can see from the outside. Let's call it external. Okay, let's carry on. All right, I see there's no comment yet. Uh, there's no questions yet. So I will look at the uh, notes here, all right? External structure, so you have lamina and PTO. Now lamina is flat, thin, smooth, and most of the time it's the green part of the leaf, lah, unless it's of course autumn. Lah. With autumn, the whole lamina turns brown or turns into orangey color. Okay, so the broad and flattened shape has large surface area. Okay, now there's a reason why it is flat and it's broad. So this is, of course, again, to increase the surface area, which is always in, uh, important because the more surface you have, 
it will be more exposed to the sunlight. Okay, so the, the main reason here is so that you can trap more sunlight okay, and to be able to allow more carbon dioxide to move in or oxygen to move out and so on for during the process of photosynthesis. Okay, so it's also thin so that the gases will be able to move into the cells and then you need to have the gases come to the cells before it can carry out the process of photosynthesis. Okay, because the carbon dioxide is the raw material to produce your food. Okay, so you have gases. It must be able to move into the, the, the structure, that means the leaf here, to be able to be in contact with the cells that carry out the photosynthesis. Okay, so it's to able to diffuse efficiently into the leaf. That's why it has to be thin. If it's too thick, you find that you'll be a long distance. If it's too thick, right? The 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 gases, the molecules or the part of the molecules will be difficult to diffuse. So you'll be pushing through a lot of uh, cells and you'll be very slow. So the diffusion rate of the gases will be very slow. Okay, next, the PTO. PTO is the leaf stalk. The function is to connect the lamina to the stem. Okay, the stem of the plant. The stem is actually here. Lah. This is considered, wait, lah. this is the, okay, let's say this is a leaf and the stem is this one lah, where it comes up from the, this comes up from the, comes up from the tree. This is the stem. Ah, okay, this is the stem. Okay, the stem, then it branches out. You have the petiole and then you have the lamina. Okay. Okay, I see there's a comment here. Maybe let's have a look. Any comment? Okay. Is it one cell take two? Uh, for which one? Which is one cell thick? I need to know uh, Shan OZS. Maybe you have to uh, give me more particulars, give me more detail for your question. Which is one cell you're referring to? Okay, I'll wait for you to type in. I just can carry on. I'll check it later. Huh? Okay, now the PTO stretches out to the lamina to produce a network of middle veins to support the lamina. So the function is to hold the lamina. If you don't have the PTO, Right, your lamina cannot be open and it cannot be like you know facing the sun to catch sunlight. Okay, let me see. Is it one cell thick or lamina? Oh, no, 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 lamina is one cell thick. Afterwards, I'll show you the cross section. Lamina has a few layers inside there. Okay, when you cut through the leaf, see, cut through the leaf like this, you cut through, you slice through the leaf, and then you look through it from the side. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Okay, let's say this piece of paper. Okay, this piece of paper here is the lamina. Okay, of course it. Okay, this is your name list actually. Yeah. So let's say this is the lamina. So the whole leaf is like this. So when I cut through, I cut through like a slice through, I'll be looking through here. It looks very thin, right? So you're asking whether it's one cell thick. Okay, it's not one cell thick. When you look under the microscope, you when you magnify it, it's actually a few layers of cells. Okay, afterwards you will see the cross section. All right, okay, good question. All right, it's always good for you to iron out your um, doubt, doubtfulness, whatever you're not sure. Yeah, all right, okay. I see there's more question. So let's carry on. Now, then uh, why do you need the PTO to hold the leaves? All right, and then uh, actually you hold it in a good position. All right, you have to make sure the leaves are opened up and they do not block each other. Okay, sometimes the leaf, you see, if you do not hold it in the correct position, the leaves will block each other. That means only the top layer, the top leaves that is nearest to the shoot there will get the sunlight. And all the ones at the bottom are like, uh, what we call covered, okay, or blocked by the top layer. So usually the pattern of the leaves that are, you know, if you see in nature, they always do not shadow each other. That means when this one leaf is here, the next layer of leaf will not be like this. It will be actually like this. Okay, the reason here is that you do not want the leaves to block each other because if you block only the top layer, the top leaf will get more sunlight. The one at the bottom will be covered. Then you will not get enough sunlight. That means you minimize the rate of photosynthesis for the whole plant. Okay, so the leaves are arranged in a mosaic pattern. Mosaic pattern is like, you know, the one set, I know that, okay. They actually make into a like jigsaw puzzle, okay. So they do not overlap each other. They do not actually cover. They actually, uh, what do you call they, they are open up. Okay, now this is the picture here. You see the leaf, the mosaic pattern? Where's my pen? <laughs> Where's my pen? Okay. Where did my pen go? <laughs> okay, never mind. So this is the leaf mosaic pattern. Okay, which is uh where did my pen go? I want to write something. Uh. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 
Ah, here. Okay, so this is the leaf mosaic pattern. You see there's one leaf here. Okay, when you look from the top, this is one leaf. Okay, you have another leaf here and they don't block each other. So this is a lower level. This is the bigger, you see the size of the leaf, they are big, that means at the bottom one. And then a little bit higher, you have the another level. You find that this level is, okay, I put dark light green. Okay, light green, this is another level. I also do not block each other. So you see this one is a higher one, a very smaller one. And then after that, you will see a smaller, smallest leaf up here. This is another level. They also do not block. Okay, so you see all the leaves get sunlight. Okay, so that is important. So they do, they will uh, be able to absorb maximum light. Okay, so here I've already put it out in a type in, in a table form, all the points, because I want to teach you how to technique menjawa. Like I mentioned just now that this is a popular question where you have adaptation. So the question asks you, let's say this is an essay question. Uh, discuss or describe the adaptation of these uh, leaves. Okay, in order uh, for it to carry out the uh, photosynthesis, okay, or to, to be able to carry out this process of producing food. So you have to uh, list out all the parts with the special features and also to explain how this feature helps to carry out the job. Okay, so I've put it up in a table here. Okay, somewhere at the bottom of the Now, this is a cross section. Okay, afterwards you'll see the internal. Uh, so we're going to go into internal. Okay, Shan Ozak S. Uh, I'm not sure what's your full name. Okay, so you will see here now. You can see here clearly it's not one cell take, right? When you slice through the leaf, when you slice through it cross sectionally, you will find that you have many layers. Okay, so this is, even though it's very thin, actually it is, when you look under the microscope, it looks like a lot of layers. Okay, now when you look at the here, I've already put out in a table form. So now this is actually a technique menjawab lah. In order to get full marks or maximum marks, make sure when you discuss adaptation, when you want to answer questions related to adaptation, now this is the word, this is the keyword. Adaptation means it has to do with form and function. Okay, form and function means, form means what is the structure like? Okay, how is it? What is the form? Form is a structure. Okay, how the uh, characteristics? How what is the characteristics? And a function means so what does it do? How is it helping the form? How does it help the function? So that means they are related. The form is designed in such a way so that it can carry out the job. That means the function. You have to mention these two. Okay, for example, let's say lamina. Okay, so you start with lamina first. One of the features, right, a, a structure is lamina. So if you're talking about lamina itself, uh, you won't get any marks because you didn't say anything about lamina. So first of all, you're going to say, how is the lamina like? So it is flat, it is broad, okay? And then this is only maybe you only get, you may not even get one mark because you need to explain how does this characteristic help you or help the plant to do the job. The job is to make food okay the job is to produce photosynthesis so you mentioned here flat and broad two explanation how does it help to provide a large surface area to trap maximum sunlight to carry out photosynthesis okay so some of the schemes will require you to have this whole pairing in order to get one mark you understand so if you just mentioned flat and broad Without mentioning how does it help, you didn't mention it provides a large surface area so it can trap maximum sunlight, okay, you do not get your mark. So you have to have a pairing. So when uh, your teachers will discuss answers of paper two and so on, or even essay, uh, paper two means including essay, they always say F and E. You must have the fact, the fact is the characteristic, and E is the explanation, and then only you might be able to get one mark. Okay, so you have the pairing there. Remember, I think your form four, your teacher must have mentioned you to you already. Yeah? How do we get your points? How do you get your marks? You want to get marks, you must mention the form and the fact and also the explanation. That only is considered one complete point on its own. Okay, all right. Then the next one we saw was thin. Okay, so the next uh, characteristic of the lamina is thin. So how is thin going to help? So thin is so that it can allow the respiratory gases to diffuse efficiently for respiration and photosynthesis. 
okay so this is to allow the gases to go in and go out so for respiration will be uh, you need to allow oxygen to go in and carbon dioxide to go out for uh, photosynthesis for carbon dioxide to go in and uh, oxygen to go out so to make it short you say respiratory gases so by saying respiratory gases what you mean actually mean is co2 and oxygen okay collectively lah. so instead of mentioning these two gases you just say respiratory it is already understood. Respiratory gases means oxygen and carbon dioxide. So it's efficiently for these two processes, respiration and photosynthesis. You need to have two, right? It doesn't mean, uh, don't, don't always have the wrong idea that plants carry out photosynthesis only, which is wrong. Plants carry out respiration as well. Okay, A lot of this is always um, a mistake that students make. They will say that animals carry out respiration and then plants carry out photosynthesis. Okay, that the assuming is full stop only, but don't forget every living cell must carry out respiration, including the plant. So plants carry out both. So you have to mention, all right, yeah, actually two processes are happening. Okay, next one we look at the PTO. Okay, PTO has veins. Veins is the one like, that you see, the one that we call kana. Uh, here, this is the vein, all right, this is the vein. But actually, what's in the vein? If you slice your leaf, you find that this is the vein. Uh, this is the vein. This part that goes into the leaf, actually it consists of xylem and phloem. Okay, so xylem and phloem, so it is to hold the, and to support the leaf lamina, okay, and also to, uh, or to provide, uh, here we have the xylem and phloem, okay, it's given here. The xylem and phloem will be later when you talk about it in the vascular bundle. So here, for PTO, why do you need the PTO? It has veins, so it's a bit rigid. It's to hold and support the leaf lamina in a leaf mosaic pattern. Okay, it's a leaf, a leaf mosaic pattern so that the leaves do not overlap to abs this is to absorb maximum sunlight. Okay, so you have to mention that as well. Lah. In order to get, like I mentioned, you need to have one set, an F and an E, okay, to get. So, so we have seen the external. Okay, one more thing we need to see is the layer here. Okay, on top of the leaves, usually most of the leaves will have a layer of wax, which we call the cuticle. Okay, cuticle is made of a uh, wax material. It is waxy, okay, you la and transparent toming. Okay, transparent means it's clear. And this is important so that you can allow sunlight to pass through. So besides being, oh, of course, what's the feature of being waxy? To be waxy means it's actually, it is waterproof. And this is important for a plant because a plant needs to be able to control the uh, water evaporation. So it doesn't want to lose too much water through transpiration. So it is waterproof, okay, to reduce loss of water by evaporation or you can also say transpiration. And it's being tran it's transparent, Okay, why? How does it help? So to allow light to enter the leaf so that actually the photosynthesis happens at the cells inside. So you must allow the sunlight to come in so that the chlorophyll can trap the, uh, the, the energy, okay? The energy from the sun. Okay, so I've put that in this table as well. So let's look here. Now, where is it? Down here. So number three, let's go on to number three. Waxy, waterproof. So the cuticle has got two features. One is waxy. It's waterproof to reduce water loss through transpiration. Okay, reduce water loss. It's important lah, because water is a is an important resource for the plant. Okay, you cannot be losing too much, otherwise it'll be dehydrated and the plant will wilt. Second feature of cuticle is it's transparent. It is to allow sunlight to penetrate the leaf, to go through, penetrate means to go through, and to reach the cells which carry out photosynthesis. We call it photosynthetic cells. Okay, okay. So the cells actually are the two types of cells you should we'll see later in the year. You see all these cells. All these they are called mesophyll cells. Okay, mesophyll cells. And you have two types of mesophyll. The top layer here on the upper. This is upper upper sangmian. Okay, on the upper side you call it the upper epidermis. Okay, upper epidermis here. Here, nearer to the upper epidermis, you have mesophyll. This layer is called mesophyll or palisade mesophyll. Okay. And the ones at the bottom here, they are more uh, not so uh, tightly packed. 
There are a lot of air space in between. This is called the uh, spongy mesophyll. Okay, we will see that in a while. Okay, and we go back to the points here. We are finished with waxy cuticle. Okay, let's look at the upper epidermis. Okay, we haven't gone to the upper epidermis. So after the waxy layer, okay, after the waxy layer, you find the first layer of cells is actually the epidermis. So it's a single layer. Now this one is single, okay, one layer only. But of course, other than, after that will be more uh, other cells that are inside. Lah. So this is like the skin. Okay, for example, human, we have the skin. For the plant, we will have the upper epidermis as the protection. So always you have one layer on top and it serves as a protection. Okay, so single layer, it, uh, what is the feature? It has no chloroplast. Okay, now no chloroplast, that means it cannot carry out photosynthesis. Huh? Doesn't matter because you have other cells inside that actually carries out the photosynthesis. So has no photosynthesis. Let me highlight this. Uh, no chloroplast. No chloroplast means it cannot carry out photosynthesis. They are transparent or they can so say translucent to allow the sunlight to go in. They are closely packed because it's to prevent entry of what? Uh, microorganism and bacteria, just like your skin, okay? If your skin is not closely, it's not tight, I mean, it's not, you have a lot of holes there, then you have a bacteria and all that will coming in. So same thing for the plant, it has to protect the cells underneath. It cannot allow entry of foreign material, which is virus or bacteria to come in and attack the, uh, infect the plant. Okay, so it is transparent. The function or the, why is it important, in reason to be transparent, Allow sunlight to penetrate to leaf so it can reach the cell which is underneath that carries out the photosynthesis. Okay, protect the underlying cells from damage. Also protect it from dehydration, okay, from entry of microorganism. M hole here means microorganism. Okay, so I've put it over here. So upper epidermis. Okay, single layer, no chloroplast, transparent. So here is to allow sunlight to penetrate the leaf. Ah, okay, I'll put in red. Penetrate. Penetrate is because it's uh, transparent. Ah. Protect underlying cells, okay, and prevent entry of microorganism. All right, okay. So now go on to the next layer after the upper epidermis. So we have seen the cuticle. Okay, we have seen with the cuticle. We've also seen the upper epidermis, which is epidermal tissue. Now we look at this layer. Okay, this layer. This layer here is palisade mesophyll. Okay. Now, what is the function? So you will see a lot of what? It has a lot of this green color thing here. You see all these green dots here? They are actually chloroplasts. So it's densely packed with chloroplasts. A lot of chloroplasts. Okay, in the cell. So you can see that there's not only one chloroplast in every cell. There's a lot of chloroplasts. The more chloroplasts it has, the more or the higher the rate of photosynthesis it can perform. Okay, it can do, it can carry out at a higher rate. So this group of cells, you can see very clearly from the form, you know that the function is to produce food or to carry out photosynthesis because it has a lot of chloroplasts. Okay, so the first layer here, which is you can see here, they are nicely arranged. They are very well packed. Okay, so they are uh, arranged vertically. Vertically means tazi, okay, straight like this. Okay, all uh, susun, susun nicely arranged here, vertically and tightly packed. Not much space in between. Okay, the, the, the good advantage, the advantage of it is that you can put more. If there are not a lot of empty space, you can put a lot of cells together. So it's densely packed. Okay, so what are the nodes here? Okay, now these are the cells below the upper epidermis. They consist of one or more layers of cylindrical cells. So it could be one layer, it could be more, okay? But at least you have one layer there. It is arranged perpendicular. Perpendicular means 90 degrees. So that means this is the top layer. When it's perpendicular, it means it's like this. The cell is all arranged like this. Okay, it's not, this is called parallel. Parallel means two sides or the two lines actually they do not meet. They are like running together at like this. It's called salary or parallel. But perpendicular is like this, like you see a 90 degree angle here. Okay, that's called perpendicular to the upper epidermis. Okay, the cells are closely packed. Okay, so take note of the important points here. You must say they are closely packed. This is a feature. So they are very small or hardly any small airspace. Uh, so the airspace is not very important here. Okay. 
and contains many chloroplasts. Okay, so you can see that it's actually a photosynthetic cell. And the cell walls are coated with a layer of film of water. Okay, This is to allow the gases, which is the carbon dioxide, to dissolve before it goes into the cell. So the, the process of photosynthesis, photosynthesis is actually in the chloroplast, in the grana itself. So that one we will see later. Lah. But you need to allow the gas to come in. Therefore, without water, or without a layer of water, the, the, the gas does not actually uh, can, can, can diffuse so well. It has to dissolve before it diffuses into the cell. Okay, so the function, all right, it is to absorb the sunlight to carry out photosynthesis, okay, and the respiratory gases can dissolve. Right? See this word? It has to dissolve first. So that's why even we may we learn about our alveolus, remember, in from uh, your last year, from 4, alveolus, you have a layer of, uh, layer of film of moisture so that the gases can dissolve before it goes into the uh, blood capillaries. So remember this keyword, you have to dissolve before diffuse. Okay, so what, uh, let me check here. Okay, next one, palisade mesophyll, what to write here? Okay, no questions yet, huh? All right. So palisade mesophyll, so look at the features or the form or the characteristics right down. So arrange vertically or we say perpendicularly 90 degrees to the upper epidermis. So the point here is closely packed, okay, closely packed. And why do you want it to be closely packed? It means it can fit more, can fit more of these cells in a small area. That means you have a lot, it's densely populated with a lot of these chloroplasts to absorb maximum sunlight to carry out photosynthesis. Okay, densely packed, right? That's the first point. The next point you can talk about the palisade mesophyll is it is contains many chloroplasts, okay, dense chloroplasts. So also to carry out photosynthesis efficiently, okay, more of chloroplasts, that means uh, it can trap more sunlight, okay, at a higher rate. Okay, and then the cells are coated with a thin layer of moisture. This is to allow the gases to dissolve before it diffuses in or out of the cells. Okay, all right, next. Huh? So that we have seen your palisade mesophyll. So that is this structure here. So another, we go down some more, okay? So from the top, we look at, from the top, we go down deeper into your cells. Okay, so we go down here. The next layer will be, this looks like, palisade uh, mesophyll, but the shape is more cylindrical, so it's a bit rounder. This one is more like rectangle. So when you draw, you make sure you draw it like this, okay? Rectangular pattern, ah, okay? Like this is your mesophyll cells, okay? Ah, sorry, palisade. But if you draw your spongy mesophyll, you have to draw like this, okay? And don't draw them too tightly. Uh, don't 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 always draw them too near to each other because there is some air space in between. Okay, it is by special design. They want to have an air space for a certain reason. So you don't put them up as packed as the palisade mesophyll. Okay, so these are the uh, spongy mesophyll. Let's look at here. All right, spongy mesophyll. This layer here. It refers to all the cells that are here. This is your spongy mesophyll. And you have intercellular space. That means space in between the cells. Okay, what is the advantage here? Why do you need to have a lot of space? Okay, spongy mesophyll here, it lies below the palisade layer. Okay, the cells are irregular shape, or you can also say spherical in shape. And they are loosely packed. Okay, so here, loosely packed with many intercellular spaces. Okay, now why? Because you need to allow space for the uh, gases to diffuse, okay, to move in and move out the cell. So it's to allow diffusion of the gases, okay. So it has chloroplasts as well, but of course less chloroplasts than the palisade. Lah. It will have less, but doesn't mean it doesn't have, it does have, so it can carry out photosynthesis. And there's also a thin layer of moisture on the cell uh, wall, Again, is to allow the uh, the moisture to allow the the gases to dissolve us. All right, so to dissolve, always say the word dissolve us when you talk about gases. Uh, the layer of the film of moisture. Okay, let me put here. So we put feature by feature. Huh? just now all that is all mixed up. So that's why I prefer to type it out here so that is 
you can see clearly what are the points you need to write when you write your essay or you write your answers. Okay, first of all, irregular shape. Or, oh, sorry, spherical, spherical shape. Okay, spherical shaped. It's loosely packed. So to create a space so that the gases can diffuse. Okay, you have interconnecting air spaces. Okay, this is to allow efficient diffusion of water and respiratory gases. So that there's space for this uh, water, which is in uh, vapor, like water vapor form, to move out of the cell and after that move through the stomach, okay, to go out. And of course, reversely, for the, the gases to move in as well. Okay, has chloroplast. Okay, of course, even of uh, although it's even fewer, okay, but it's fewer, it still has chloroplast. This is again to carry out photosynthesis. So always remember, don't forget, you have to mention here, okay, mention here and mention here. Otherwise, you talk about all the features you didn't explain. So sorry, yeah, you know your facts, but you don't know how to write the answer. So the scheme is like this you make sure you have your F and your E. Okay, next one cells are coated with a thin layer of moisture, okay. Uh, water or moisture is to allow the respiratory gases to dissolve. Again, you see this keyword here, to dissolve before diffusing in or out of the cells. Okay, next, we go to the next structure. So after this, you will see this. Okay, this is the, uh, what, here. This part here. Uh, this is the vein that you see. Lah. Actually, it is the, uh, the, the vascular bundle. Vascular bundle that, consists or that composed of xylem and phloem. Okay, so this part here, vascular bundle. Ah, the vascular bundle actually makes up the vein, the vein in the leaf itself. We call it the gun, all right? The gun is a very general word. So I don't like the word. It's actually a wrong idea. You say the, in Cantonese, we say nerve also, we say the gun. The, this one also, we the plant, the, 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 the vein also, we say the gun. Everything also the gun, okay? So it's very, very ambiguous. We don't always say kan, huh? we always use the correct term. So consists of xylem and phloem. So why we need that? Of course, very uh, logically, you want to have make food, you need to have the water because water is one of the uh, raw materials to produce your food. And of course, you also need phloem uh, tissues to carry away the food that is already been produced in the leaf to transport to other parts of the plant that needs the food. So it's for transportation. Okay, xylem transport water and minerals, while phloem transport the finished product, which is the organic substances. Okay, that means the product that is made by the leaf. That means uh, glucose, uh, okay, sucrose, uh, and all this stuff. Lah. Okay, let's look at here. So vascular bundle, so it contains lignified xylem. So the xylem has a material deposited on lignin, uh, on the xylem, which is called lignin. So lignified means yo lignin the uh, yo lignin the xylem. Lah. When you say lignified means the xylem has lignin. Okay, this is to transport water and mineral salt okay, from the root. So water is always from the root upwards. Okay, it never goes, uh, water comes down. Water is always growing up. Okay, because of due to some uh, some processes that we will learn later, transpirational pool and so on. And it's also to provide mechanical strength because of the lignin. Okay, because of the lignin, it gives it the hard uh, rigid rigidity so that you can able to uh, support the lamina, okay? Uh, to support, uh, uh, support. Okay, next one contains phloem. Containing phloem is important because when you make your food, you have to transport it to other parts that cannot make the food. Example will be your the roots, okay? And also um, the flower, which is red, right? You don't have much chlorophyll, you can't make food, but because it has cells, it needs food as well. So the flower or the, what they call the, the fruit, of course, yeah, fruit also. Lah. So fruit is to store, store the, the, the food that comes over, the fruits, guo, like guo shi. Okay, so phloem is to transport organic substances, or you can say products of photosynthesis from the leaves to other parts of the plant. So depending on where the plant needs the food, it can go up or it can go down. It is bi-directional. Movement of the Food is bidirectional, but movement of water is unidirectional, which is always from the root upwards. Okay, it never water never comes down; it's always upwards. Okay, next. Now we've seen all the parts. Now we go to the last layer, which is the lower epidermis. It's just like the top layer, but it has a special specialization to some of the cells. 
Okay, so lower epidermis, they are single layer as well. So only the top and the bottom are single layer. In the middle, you have a, the palisade cells. So here lower, no chloroplast, just like the top, okay? It has no chloroplast except the gut cells. Ah, let's remember, we mentioned, we uh, learned earlier in the first place, uh, we have some specialized epidermal tissue, okay? Uh, specialized epidermal tissue example will be the gut cell. Okay, I see a question here, All right? Okay, is it one cell take two? Which one? Uh? Oh, let me not already answer. For efficient gaseous exchange, yeah, correct, Shan. The vascular bundle includes cambium. Yes, it includes cambium, correct, yes. Okay, but on uh, this part of the leaves, uh, uh, it doesn't really have a lot of cambium. So it doesn't really divide here. Lah. Mostly the cambium is at the stem so that you can have this secondary growth. But for the veins, it's mostly you will have this one, xylem and phloem. Okay, I have not come across having cambium yet. In the leaves, uh, I think you're asking for the leaves, right? Um, I've not seen pictures that it contains cambium. Let me uh, find out more information and let you know. Okay, in the next, uh, I'll Google Meet. Lah. I'll discuss the answer with you. So usually in the leaves, you will have um, xylem and phloem because that's for transportation. So the cell division doesn't really uh, work here because it, if you have the cambium, that means the leaf is going to get fatter and fatter and fatter, right not? Okay, because you are going to make secondary xylem, you're going to make secondary phloem. That means your leaf is going to bulge. It's going to bulge. I think it's quite unlikely that's going to happen now. So usually I think, all right, it is going to have only xylem and phloem for the uh, leaf. Okay, let me check it out. Okay, let me check. I'll let you know later in another session. Okay, let's go on to this one. Okay, so uh, the specialized uh, epidermis is one example is the gut cell. Okay, remember we learned it in our first lesson. And also the other one is the root hair cell. Okay, this is to increase the surface area to absorb water and so on. So this is one of the specialized epidermal cells, which is gut cells. And each stoma, remember the stoma is the little opening here, and it has two gut cells to be uh to uh is to actually to control the size of the stoma. Okay, then there are actually more stomata on the lower epidermis. Okay, so this is uh, logical uh, because the top layer will have uh, is quite exposed to the sun, more exposed to the sun. So if you have a lot of um, stomata on the top layer or the low upper epidermis, you will find that transpiration will occur at a very high rate. So you will end up having the plant to lose water or the water loss will be very high. So if it's not able to replenish that water supply, the plant might be dehydrated and then ultimately it will wilt. And if the water is not returned, the plant will die off okay after a certain while a certain time so what is the function to protect the leaf from damage okay again epidermis is always remember the keyword epidermal tissues are always uh the function is to protect okay then they control because the gut cells is specialized epidermal tissue they control the opening and closing of the stoma okay qi hong then they uh regulate the gaseous exchange and water vapor so the two things that go out uh, through your stoma is only two things one is water vapor another one is the gas uh, the gases which is carbon dioxide and oxygen so this is where they go in and out uh, through the stoma okay here feature okay feature or the fact or the ex uh, characteristics single layer no chloroplast except for the gut cells so this is to protect the cells underneath Okay, underneath that means the one that the meso the uh, spongy mesophyll lah, to protect the the underneath is actually the one before it lah. That means it's the spongy mesophyll. Okay, gut cells. Okay, so it has gut cells is to control the opening and the closing of the stomata. Okay, next ah, let me carry on. So okay, so uh, we have done already. We are done with all the features for the parts of the function uh, of the leaf. So remember this way of answering okay i just want to uh, recap you need to talk about the feature and tie in with the explanation how it helps so these two must go together this one is the feature but you must say how does it help to do what okay what does it do what does it do so like that then you will only get your know, full full explanation and everything you get one mark okay so sometimes a question asks for two that means you got to uh, write two pairs okay one f one e 
okay to get one mark then another two f and two e to get another marks so you please be careful with this kind of questions for adaptation adaptation they require you to have this f and e okay this is true experience of marking la, for i mean uh, so many years of you know the scheme and so on okay now let's, let's go to the next part okay how does um okay wait uh, the next part here is main organ for gaseous exchange so we're talking about the stoma now <coughs> this is what the stoma looks like okay this is the actual picture so the notes here that i have is exactly the same is you don't really have to uh, write anything so it's exactly exactly the same so uh plants need to carry out uh, photosynthesis because they need to produce uh, food. In order to produce food, they need to have water and you see the photosynthetic reaction, the, the what they call the um, reaction. Ah? Okay, remember how to remember your photosynthesis? You need to have carbon dioxide. Okay, this is your photosynthesis uh, synthesis, uh, uh, what, the equation plus water you will get your glucose plus oxygen okay and here of course you need the sunlight which is the energy and of course you need the chlorophyll so you see that your raw material is this and this and how does it get this how does the plant get carbon dioxide through the stoma and water is from the xylem okay from the roots so what um this is what they look like okay so you can see the stoma opening is like you know the the ginjal or we call the 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 kidney it looks like a shape of a kidney or we call the the great bean all right kidney shape uh actually it opens and closes is because of the mechanism of actually water going into the cell and also uh water coming out of the cell at certain times day or night okay this is the actual picture okay seen under the electron microscope which is magnified many many thousands of times okay okay and then this is also another picture of different stages this is not really close so we say stomata don't really close if you really close that means it cannot even carry out respiration because the oxygen cannot come in it's slightly we call it close and not really not 100 close it's actually very small okay when you say this is close actually this is very small then this is wide open Wide open usually it happens at the daytime. So they like actually uh light triggers, light triggers the stoma to open. So you will find that during the daytime, stoma, more stomas, uh, most of the stomas are open. But at nighttime, the stomas are closed. So what is the mechanism that governs this? What is the mechanism that controls this? So you're gonna look at this. Okay, and now I see your textbook. Ah, look at your textbook here. Now the mechanism that controls the stomata opening or closing actually is based on two factors. Okay, what makes open and close? Because these two things happen. Okay, let's look at the first one. Now the condition of the gut cells depend on the potassium ion potassium ion intake uptake uh, by the cells or the sucrose concentration in the sap cell of the gut cell. Okay, so these two uh, are the determiners. These two determines whether your stoma will open or your stoma will close. Okay, so let's see. Uh. Now, accumulation or elimination, that means coming in or going out. Accumulation means potassium ion coming into the gut cell. Elimination means the potassium ion going out, okay? changes the solute potential now solid potential means is the concentration of the solid potential is like the concentration now when the concentration is high we say the solute potential is high okay remember solute is the substance that is uh dissolved inside that for example salt salt is solute so when you say solute potential is high that means it is highly concentrated that means there are a lot of solute inside Okay, and then this will either increase or decrease the water potential. Water potential, again, the word here, that means the water concentration. When water potential high, that means a lot of water. Okay, when water potential is low, that means it's less water. That's what it means. And the special word potential means it's like, uh, you just imagine it's like concentration. Okay, so solute potential high, that means uh, it's increased the solute potential, that means increase the solute concentration. Okay, so the water will diffuse out or into the gut cell through osmosis. So this is the 
uh, the process which actually uh, allows the water to go in out. So when, remember you learned in form four, whenever water goes in and out through a cell, it's always through osmosis. Always water diffusion. Ah. So like this, this is a very specialized word. Okay, it's a, just a fancy word for diffusion of water only. They just want to be very sp uh, specific. When water diffuses, it's actually osmosis. It's actually called water diffusion. Okay, and this condition will determine whether the gases are turgid. Turgid means uh, turgid means what? Uh, very hard and very firm. The cell is like you know already all expanded, and then it's flat. It's the opposite. The cell, like water has gone out and becomes very lump like that, very lump bit, lump Okay, I see a question here. Ah, okay, sodium potassium pump. Uh, the sodium potassium pump is more specific for the okay, Shan, uh, Shan OZS. This is not related, not 100% related to the sodium potassium pump. This sodium potassium pump is in the red plus cell. One. Okay, that is specific. So you don't call it the sodium potassium pump. The sodium potassium pump is for the, the what they call the red blood cell, the erythrocytes. Okay, but this one, potassium goes in. You just say the potassium diffuses inside. So don't use the same word, don't use the same term. That sodium potassium pump is specific for erythrocyte. Ah, okay, the, the, the exchange of the sodium and potassium through the, the, the surface, uh, through the erythrocyte, the membrane. Okay, wait, uh, swollen. Swollen, which is swollen. Yes, swollen, the gut cells will swell because the water goes in. Okay, next. The other factor is sucrose concentration. Now, this also will affect, will affect that means whether the gut cell has a lot of sucrose or not. Okay, sucrose is the sugar. Sucrose, as you remember in form four, you learned it before, is one of the disaccharide, which has two monomers of monosaccharide joined together, right? You will get a sucrose. So glucose and fructose joined together is the disaccharide. So how does the sucrose concentration increase? That means there must be more uh, sugar. Okay, and how does it get more sugar? How does the cell, the gut cell get more sugar? The only way it gets more sugar is because it has already made food. Okay, so photosynthesis has taken place. In the daytime, the gut cells actually will absorb sunlight. So photosynthesis actually happens and it's making more and more sucrose, making more and more sugar. So this, all right, will produce sugar. And when sugar is high, all right, it is the solid potential. Remember, you learned it before, hypertonic condition. So in the gut cell now, it's hypertonic. And outside the surrounding cell will be hypotonic. That's why water will actually diffuse into the gut cell. So when the sucrose concentration increases in the gut cell, the water from the outside will move in. And that will make the cell expand or curve or, or we call it swell up. Okay, so at nighttime, the opposite happens. The nighttime, because there's no photosynthesis, so it will keep on using the sugar that's already inside the cell. So the concentration of sugar will decrease. So when it becomes decreased, that means it will become uh, less, hyper hypo uh, high, less hypertonic. So it becomes more hypotonic. So now the opposite, the water will move out. Okay, so water will move out. That means the gut cells will become flaccid and it will like close up like that. Okay, it will not, you want to expand like jump poke poke like that. This is expand, all right, this is become swollen. So at night time, water moves up from the gut cells, so it will uh, flaccid, it will become flaccid, and therefore it does not open any, more or less the, the, the stoma there will become smaller. So the whole, the, the pore is smaller. Okay, let's look at it in detail, all right? You can see the picture here clearly. So opening of stoma, this is looking usually in the daytime, okay? So I write here day, daytime. Now, during the daytime, right, the potassium ions enter the gut cells. So iron is taken in, okay, potassium ion, potassium ion is taken into the cell. That means now the solute potential increases. That means the concentration of the solute, okay, solute means it's a garam. La. Potassium is a garam, isn't it? Potassium is a salt. So it enters and then the concentration of the potassium increases. So we call it the sodium potential increase, or solute potential increases. And of course, when the solute potential increases, that means more solute, more, more, uh, what do you call more potassium. That means on the other hand, the more water means is comparatively water becomes less, now, isn't it? You got more salt means you got less water. Okay. So the water potential will be decreases. So when solute potential increases, 
okay it means the uh, water potential will decrease and this makes a high what condition ah? okay this is what kind of condition when you have your uh solute high water less this is a high hypertonic okay your gut cell is hypertonic to the other cells the other cells are the the normal epidermal cells okay so therefore now it's hypertonic now the gut cell is now hypertonic so the water molecules from the epidermal cells that means the neighboring cells the neighbor okay the cells are we will diffuse into the gut cell by osmosis so you see the water rushes in see this water right water coming in because the potassium goes in so it increases the solute potential of the gut cells therefore making it hypertonic to the epidermal cells or the cells outside the epidermis so that's why water goes in and when water goes in the gut cells become turgid okay and it curves outwards now why does it curve outwards actually it's because of the design of the gut cell so what's the design the design is actually like this the i have to draw out yeah it doesn't have a diagram your textbook doesn't mention here so actually it's like this you when you draw your gut cell okay i mentioned to my form four class right here when uh, you draw the you you have a double layer because of the cell wall okay now but unfortunately on this side it's thicker okay on the what the 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 cell wall facing the stoma this has a thicker cell wall okay and on the other one is a thinner cell wall so it's uneven thickness so when you have uneven thickness of the cell wall when the cell when this water goes in it will try to swell swell up it will this side becomes less flexible less flexible or less elastic flexible ah. and this one is more elastic or more flexible so it bends more the outer layer or the outer part of the cell bends more the other one the one facing the stomach bends less so as a result this the, the outer one is like become longer and longer and longer this one is less so you can see the difference here is it will curve okay just like a simple experiment when i have a balloon a long balloon i put a cellophane tip on one side and stick up stick it stick it so that i don't allow it to expand and when I blow into the cell of, and when I blow into the balloon, it actually is going to curve. Your balloon, you're gonna get not gonna get a straight balloon, but you're gonna curve a curved balloon. Okay, so this is because of the special design of the the gut, which has uneven thickness of the cell wall. Okay, that's what makes it curve actually. Okay, okay. So here, any questions here? Let me just look at the chat. I have to move my slide a little bit. Ah, okay nothing here so this is why the stoma opens when the stoma opens because like this it goes like this it curves okay and, uh, and another at the same time right because of um uh there's sunlight daytime uh, photosynthesis occurs so there are two things one is the potassium going in another one is because the the cell itself is making making food at the same time so it's also producing sugar so it the concentration of sugar increases becomes high so when there's more sucrose that means comparatively it's like less water so the water potential decreases okay less uh means the comparatively la when you got more solute high solute that means low water la. that means okay the water potential decreases and because it, that means it forms a hypertonic condition inside the cell so the water molecules from the epidermal cells will diffuse into the cells okay so water rushes in okay when water rushes in it will <clears throat> become turgid same same story lah. so because it uh uneven uneven thickness of the cell wall one side will curve more the outer side will curve more the inner side curve less so as a result it will curve outwards and the stomach opens okay so this is how you explain why the stomach opens in the daytime Okay, so you don't forget to talk about the potassium ion and talk about the sodium concentration. So these are the two determine the, the two factors that causes it to open. Okay, so when it opens, now we're gonna talk about the reverse lah. Open that means you have to close also, right? So that happens usually at night. Okay, closing of stoma. So closing of stoma happens at night when there is less when there's no sunlight. Okay. 
So what happens? We talk about the mechanism. First of all, the potassium ions. So the potassium ions now reversely, it will move out of the gut cells. Okay, so K, uh, K plus, this is potassium, it moves out. That means when it moves out, there'll be less uh, potassium ion in the gut cell. That means the solute potential increase uh, decreases. Solute potential means the concentration uh, decreases. So comparatively, when you have less solute, that means your water potential will look like as if it's more. Okay, so your water potential increases. Okay, so now you have a condition where we consider it's like a lot of water, right, but less solute. So you will have a hypotonic condition. Okay, it's hypotonic compared to the epidermal cells. So, so, limian, okay, now the gut cell is like hypo now. Compared to the epidermal cell, it's comparatively, it's like hyper. Okay, so inside is hypo, so the right hypo, and the other cells are hyper now. Okay, so you have two places or two regions where you have different uh, water potential. Then, so therefore, according to what you've learned in Form 4, you have osmosis, right? So water molecules will diffuse out, okay, from the gut cell to the epidermal cell. So you can see the water going out now, okay, water rushing out to the, uh, to the epidermal cells. So uh, that, in after that, the effect here is water become going out, so it's less turgid. Or you call it flaccid. Okay, now the cell becomes a bit lump back like that. Okay, so when there's lack, uh, there's not enough water, the turgidity, the cell will become uh flaccid. So it will sort of like just like it was like this. So now it goes back to this original position, and your stoma size will decrease. So you call it the stoma closes lah. But remember, it doesn't hundred percent close. If it closes, then you cannot have res respiration. Okay, because the oxygen doesn't come in. It's just a very small pore. Okay, next one, sucrose, talk about sucrose, and I don't forget. Now, so we talk about absence of light. Now, you don't have photosynthesis, it does not occur, it doesn't make new sugar. So whatever sugar there is inside the cell, it's going to be used up, okay? It's going to be used up. So the sucrose concentration becomes low, okay? When the sugar is low, that means comparatively, you compare with the water content, water is like higher, okay? Less sugar means more, more water. So the water potential increases. And when you have a lot of water here, it's like hypotonic condition. So inside the gut cell is hypo. Comparatively to the outside or the epidermal cells is hyper. Okay, so you have two regions where you have different water potential. So as a result, the water molecules will diffuse out, okay, from the gut cells to the epidermal cells by osmosis. So water comes out. Okay, water comes out and the gut cells become flaccid, the stoma closes. Okay, so you can oh you can don't need to write in two sets like this. When you write your question answers, you can just write your potential uh the this one, talk about this one, then talk about this one, water potential. Uh, okay, here then together this one is can be written together like, because it's the same. Whatever you mentioned here and the same is the same. The water molecules moving out, you don't have to mention both times. Okay, you just mention potassium ions by uh, gut cells, potassium ions move out. And then at the same time, you will have uh, sucrose being less produced. Okay, and uh, or what, uh, what do you call it? Because of the night, no sunlight, it doesn't uh, carry out photosynthesis. So you can write these two factors. And lastly, the last part here, you can just combine and write once. Okay, because it's the same thing. Okay, so this is uh, how you want to describe why the stoma opens and closes. This is also a popular question when it asks you to describe or explain the mechanism of stoma opening and closing. Okay, of course, it's one part of the question uh, related to the other parts earlier. Uh. Okay, so I've mentioned, I have explained what I wanted to explain. So this, my notes here is actually the same, just that it's more arranged because it's in uh, actually same, uh, point form. Okay, just that it's easier to read. Now, for me, I find it's easier to read. Okay, but it's all because it's bold in bold. It's the same thing, actually. Okay, so let me see if we have any questions. If not, I have this. I've started uh, chapter two. Okay, if any questions, we will have our Google session next week. So we can have interaction. Then you can ask me questions. I can answer at the same time. Okay, is there any questions? Okay, maybe I can just look at your chat box. Uh, any questions? Okay, if not, then we will end here. We will end here. So I hope you've understood the 
and questions i understood the the lesson and please uh, do ask me questions in my telegram group okay if you need any help or any clarification on any part okay uh, any questions here any questions here just wait for maybe one minute or so anyone to ask any questions okay um, you take some time for my question my 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 uh you know whatever i say here it will take some time for you to to hear it from on the other side because it takes it's a that's about 10 second lag 10 to 20 second lag okay um why potassium ions enter gut cell during the day okay this is a mechanism la. it is like an active transport okay just like when we have active transport uh the cell just knows how to pull in the uh, ions this is actually active transport Okay, so um, if you want, I can look up on this and I'll give you more explanation during the Google Meet. Okay, remember to ask me that question. Why it enters the gut cell? This is a mechanism that the cell, uh, this is uh, their physiological process that happens. This is actually true, active transport. Okay, so at night, it will pump out the potassium, just like your sodium potassium pump in your erythrocyte. So this is what the cell does. It is part of their, their, their function that they, they carry out. All right, okay. So any other questions? You know questions that we can end the session is more than one hour. Okay, so I think, uh, all right. If no questions, we will end the session then. So thank you very much for joining the class. Hope you've enjoyed it and also learned something. And please do uh, read up your textbook. Okay, read up the textbook, what I've covered. And I will see you next week for the next session. Okay, right. Okay, all right. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. Okay, bye-bye.